Right, I'm just going to crack on with the stream, guys. Okay, so um, so the things we're going to be looking at today, the five, my five top tips, um, and this is just five tips, right? I mean, there are like tons of things that you could look at, but I, but in my mind, these are the most obvious. These are the things that are going to make the most difference to how easy it is to do slap, how nice it is, how comfortable it is to play your bass, um and and how satisfied you are with with the sound that's coming back um jam while i go into this you could probably just try closing everything and going back in again but anyway i better crack on okay so the first thing is nut height right so we're talking about the the nut uh or, or should i say that the height of the nut where it goes over the string so if i just show if i bring this camera up here um, we should be able to get zoomed in a little bit more on it. Okay, which one's going to... All right, so so we're talking about here, right, um, and where the string travels over the nut, so the nut slots there. Now, there are a few fancy bases out there like Warwick's that have adjustable nuts. I think they call it the adjuster nut, and it's actually a really, really cool invention where you can just use an Allen key, or two, uh, there's two Allen screws, I think. I know you're not technically supposed to call them Allen, Allen screws, but there we go. Hex screws. Uh, and you can just raise and lower the height of it. It's absolutely amazing. But for most of us, uh, on most bases, we, we, we've got a fixed note, and the only way to adjust it is with a file, pretty much. Right? Um, and so, uh, it's something that gets really 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 like overlooked um you know like almost every bass that i've ever picked up from a shop uh, most basses i bought second hand um have had the nut set too high now manufacturers will do that in kind of intentionally because it's a one-time thing i mean obviously you can replace the nut and you can also fill the nut um it's not the best th uh, repair but you can do it um but basically, it doesn't matter what you do up here. It doesn't matter what you do to the action. It doesn't matter what you do to the truss rod. As, as right as you get all that stuff, if the nut's too high, the bass is always going to feel kind of hard work to play. Um, and, you, you, you know, the, the, the sort of left-hand slap stuff, you know, that, that sort of clicky, percussion-y stuff, is always going to be kind of hard work, you know? Um, so that is the first thing that I will check. Now, it's really funny because because uh, Janet mentioned Gary is watching. Quick check in with Jan. Is is anything happening over there? Is he just not letting you in? Uh, I can see you, but I've no chat on there, so I you, can't kind of do you've anything. You've no chat on there, right? Okay. I've got a button. Enter studio. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, Gary, please, you know, feel, feel free to correct anything what? I say or chip in or whatever. Um, but what we're looking at here is if I can just try and get the bass in a position where you could see this, um, hang on, let me just, I'm going to unplug it. So I've got a bit more latitude. That's the right word. Here we go. Right. Okay. So it'd be better if I do it like this. Right, hang on, let me get it into shot. Right, there we go. So, you can see that, obviously, from an open string position to fretted, there is a little bit of movement, right? Now, if you've got your bass on you, just see what that's like from the open E to the first fret F on, on the E string, right? Now, again, um, some people use different methods. Some people measure this stuff. I do everything by rack of the eye and feel and just kind of like experience i guess but i tend to to set the nut the nut height right at just a little more than it than it takes so if you fret the first fret and then fret the second fret like that right you probably can't perceive any motion on here at all by the way i don't think i can quite get in focus that close but there's a little bit of movement there and the movement between the open E and the first fret should be just a little more than that, in my opinion. Just a little more, right? Definitely doesn't want to be less. Um, 
because you'll just get rattle. Um, and 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 if you go the same, then you run the risk of if you need to adjust your truss rod or whatever, that open E is going to rattle. But that's kind of like my golden rule. Now, um, you can either attempt it yourself, you know, um, or if you've got like a local repair guy, if you don't know what you're doing, it's probably worth doing that because nut files make it really easy. Like I've got a set of dedicated nut files and there's one for each kind of gauge and it makes it really easy. But, um, but if you haven't, I mean, in the past, I've used kitchen knives and, you know, uh, mini hacks junior hacksaw blades and all kinds of stuff but you probably don't want to get into all that stuff so basically if you've got a lot of movement on from the opening to that first fret if you can afford to because it's not the most expensive of jobs either if you can afford to have that set or if you can do it yourself and by the way if you do it yourself just take your time you know just just baby steps and, and make sure you, you you take um material off the sides but probably best to take it someone that knows what they're doing and it, it makes the, the most huge difference, right? And it's going to make slap playing, like, so, so much easier. Wow, we've got a super, super chat. chat. Who's that? Who's that, Jam? It's Adam Mahama. Well, thank you very much, so much for that. I'm much appreciated, really. And is there a question tied with that or a comment, Jam? Not yet, no. So if you do have one, Adam, <laughs> um, yeah. You can Thank you pop so it much. In there. Thank you. Quick one, Jan. Just checking in with Jan. Uh, what was this? <laughs> checking in with Jan. What am I doing? How is it going? Have you got it back there or not? Yes. Oh wow! This yeah. is amazing. I'm so excited. It's brilliant. And by the way, there wasn't just one button when I said do a click enter studio. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just big, for everybody thinking. Big red oh my button. God, enter I studio. Just yeah. Needs to click that one button. No, there were loads, but that was the one. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. Good. Thank you so much. Okay. So that is tip number one. So before I carry on to tip number two, uh, anybody, quick thing, right? You should, um, don't just dive in and do the nut, like I say, if you've never done it before, because you do want to make sure that your truss rod, the relief in the neck is, is set first, okay? Um, so that, again, might be a reason to, but like I say, I would think, um, like if Gary is there, maybe you can confirm. But I would think Gary is there actually, and he has been commenting. I'm on now on this other one, yeah, yeah, because I don't have any of the chat. I finally got into the other one, and I've got no chat there. So awesome. Uh, right, so Gary actually says, yeah, um, feely gauges, and he said a set of feely gauges are cheap nowadays. Yeah, um, and he said twenty to twenty two thou. From the fretboard to the strings, usually. Okay, cool. So, yeah, fully yeah. gauges. I think that's obviously what he Absolutely. uses. Absolutely, yeah. Like I say, I mean, you know, I, uh, the way I've always done it is, is is by just feel and eye and just, and you know, and I don't do it for other people generally. You know, I only do it for myself. Um, so, you know, but that's something that's just, you know, I, I've, I've just, I just know what I want. And, um, yeah, and if you've never done this before, you don't, you know, so, so yeah. Great advice, Gary. Thanks so much. And he also says, yes, yeah, set the truss rod first. Absolutely, yeah, because, um, you know, it's 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 got to be right before you, you set that. So, again, good advice from Gary, yeah. And um, for anybody that doesn't know, Gary actually builds his own bases, fantastic bases. He does. So that's why he's, always, he's so knowledgeable with this yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's it, you know. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and, it, and I think you'll agree, Gary. I, I mean, it just, it's like, it's almost like a secret source thing. It's like, you know, people just don't, you know, they, they don't realise and then and then they wonder why the bass feels crap to play or if it's a guitar, why when they play an F, it's all out of tune and stuff, you know. So, um, yeah. All right. So, any more comments on that? What I'll do, I'll do a point at a time and then we'll just dip into the comments and stuff for a minute. So, is there anything else at the minute, Jan? Uh, well, CEO uh, Pangea said, are you saying nut or note? Nut. 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 It, yeah, nut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bet. it's very pronounced in this this part. Yeah, nut <laughs> is what yeah, what we'll see in the north of England. Yeah, that's if anyone can understand us. <laughs> Crikey, but, Dan, that was a good laugh. No, was it? <laughs> Shall I try it again? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, dear. So, any more, Jan? Uh, right, okay. Um, Thanks for the questions, guys, and comments. Uh, relating to that, uh, well... Bruno Cohen says, Scott, it looks like you don't have any problem with 24 fret basses. I personally struggle with harmonics noises and prefer to slap on a 21 or 22 fret right, bass yeah. like JB's or MM. 
Marcus Miller is that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, any opinion on this? Yeah, actually, yeah, because they've had a you know a lot of um, you know bases like that as well as twenty four fret um, bases, and um, absolutely right. And and yeah, what he's talking about there is guys is if you did he say slap? I think he said specifically. Uh, d d d yes, yeah. Yeah. So what's going on? If you're playing slap bass, no harmonics. Uh, no, he's, he, no, he said and slap. And then prefer to slap on yeah. a 21. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So what, what's going down here is that if you're slapping, right, and you get up near the, um, if, if you've got a 24 fret board and you slap the way that, you know, that I do, um, you know, I tend to slap near the end of the fingerboard. Now what's going on there is if you're playing like an open knee, right, I'm going to exaggerate, and I slap right on that fret, this is what you could get. Go on, I'll, I'll try and do it. Hang on. Right? Because I've, I've hit it right on a harmonic point. So, um, and I, and I kind of discovered this, you know, re really early on. Because I was like, why is going, what's going on? What's going down? Um, <clears throat> so, a couple of things that you can do to get around that is just, I do micro adjust if, if that's a thing, what my right hand's doing. So, um, so if I'm playing, so you see, like I'm going like past. I'm going past the twenty fourth fret. I'm going into the uh, into the neck a little bit more, so that I don't I don't get that. So that's one thing. You, you could move this way as well. But then you get that sound, which some people like, you know, where the pickup's hitting the... Sorry, the string's hitting the pickup. Listen to this. Check out a track called... Um, hang on, it's on... It, uh, it's I think it's called Play the Bass by Stanley Clark. I love that track. It's the first track on um, Time Exposure. And... Uh, I've never played it before, but that's the kind of... It's kind of something like that. And you can hear the strings hitting those Alembic pickups like crazy. You know, some people like it, but I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> it, I don't like that. So, um, so yeah, I would suggest going more, uh, sorry, the other way, that way. Okay? I'm um, trying to think if there's anything else on that. But, no, I think that covers it, Jan. Any more? Gospel Blues Man is saying, uh, do you like bone or tusk nuts? Okay. Now then. Uh, just interesting on, on, on this one, what, what Gary says, because he mentioned uh, nuts the other week. Now, uh, I'm not bothered what, the, <laughs> what they are, if I'm honest. And the, the reason is, and, the, and, and <laughs> this is how it feels to me, but I might be wrong, right, is as soon as you fret a note, right, the nuts, I don't think, it doesn't feel like it is, the nut isn't involved, right, anymore. Because you've kind of, you know, the, that fret's now the nut, right? So everything that's happening between there and there. So ideally, like brass nuts and things like that, and, and what, what materials were mentioned? I know there's like bone and plastic and tusk and what, you know, tusk? Ouch. <laughs> yeah, it was bone or tusk. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just like, when, when, when I spec these up, I, I went for, um, you know, just a synthetic bone nut. But it does make a difference, you know, on, on open strings. And if you do a lot of sort of, you know, um, like it, it would make that E much richer and, and more, sus you know, would sustain longer. Uh, but for me personally, it's never been like a massive deal. Um, and I kind of like the way that if I screw it up, you know, I can kind of fix it a bit easier myself. But, um, but yeah, you know, like though, yeah, uh, for me, like just synthetic bone which i don't know if that's even a thing or whether it's just plastic but it works fine for me but there is a difference you know so yeah that's just my own personal thing yeah anymore um i'm just kind of going through again because my organization went i'm really sorry about this it's uh, all right it's not your fault janet so uh mark smith thinks the headstock on that looks like a rickenbacker so yeah it's really funny a lot of people um think these are rickies and it's uh stephen chang's fault <laughs> No, what it is, um, my original ones didn't have this particular truss rod cover. They had more like um, a sort of Gibson-y belt sort of 
kind of one. Um, and I think it's that. I think that really... And then when you add to it the fact that some Rickies do have a bit of this shape going on, it, it, it really just goes into Ricky territory. Uh, but if you can kind of picture it without that, it doesn't scream as... And just out of interest, not a lot of people know this, but when I designed it, um, that um, curve that you see there, right, actually matches the curves here. You know, I actually kind of copied that curve across. And, um, yeah, there we go. So Terrell Phillips says, a super question. So I'm, I'm wondering whether... Uh is that the poll, perhaps? I'm not sure. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it basically says lots of bass synth pedals. Is that bass yeah, synth? synth? Yeah, synth, yeah, yeah. Uh, out there. How come there aren't any great slap, pop, thump bass synth, uh, synth pedals out? Uh, for health of the knuckles. Good question. <laughs> for health of the knuckles, looks like effects would be a good thing. Right, so. Um, that I've unplugged myself. Yeah, interesting question about the, the synth. Now, the first thing is. Uh, synth pedals don't respond very well to slapping because uh, it's such a kind of dynamic. Start your camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John. They don't really respond well, respond well to to slapping because um, it's so, such a dynamic thing and there's so much percussion in it. You, they, they tend to sort of freak out. Uh, whereas if you're playing smooth notes, they tend to track a lot better. Now I don't know if you mean like that or you mean pedals that would synthesize slap um where you do play normal and it, you know but but either way yeah i mean there are options out there and you know i love sometimes to put a synth pedal on i don't know if I, let me try that over here see what i've got in my little tiny zoom uh, box of tricks let's see what we got here um give me a second guys Let's dial in. Let's see what we got. Hang on. I should probably remember where synths are, shouldn't I, Jan? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions I could answer while I'm finding a synth? Well, it's not a question, but Mark Smith said, I recently tried to teach myself how to set up a bass. Okay. I took the strings uh, off, fiddled with the truss rod, bridge, etc. Yeah. Put it all back together. Uh -huh. Sounded amazing. Still don't know what I did. Well, well, uh, done. we'll send over <laughs> on to you, I think, you know. <laughs> since Whatever you did, you nailed it. But, uh, yeah. Okay, how about that? Yeah. yeah. So, um... So let's have it. Let's have a play with that, right? So here's a little synth sound. It's really loud synth. Turn, turn that down. It reminds me of uh, rhubarb and custard. Right, what? It's kind of fun, isn't it? Right now, the thing is with that. It's responding quite well. Let's try slapping it. Right? It doesn't know what's going on because a lot of slap stuff is, is percussive, you know. So it just has a go. Um, but you can use it if you do if you play slap like real clean. <laughs> it, it lost it there, but yeah. So there you go. Okay, John, any more? Um, I should crack on, really. Yeah. Uh, goose, uh, goosebumps, man. Uh, gospel That'll do. blues, man. Sorry. <laughs> I do my own setup and it's good for non slap playing, but I need to know what you need different for slap. Okay, well, let's let's crack on then. That, yeah. that's a, that seems like a good sort of nudge in, in, in that direction. So, so number one, uh, no, and that, that's good, like a kind of universal thing, right? The next one is, now I've kind of put these in the wrong order, right? This should have been number one, uh, but it's, it's neck relief, uh, or other, in other words, the truss rod adjustment. Now, most bases have the ability or have a truss rod, so you can, you can adjust how much relief there is in the neck. So you can go from a situation where you might have too much relief so that it's, it's like got a, a big scoop in it. And if you think about it, if the, if the neck's kind of scooped like this, 
the string's taut, so it's completely straight. So it means down here it might be somewhere near, especially if the nut's right. Up here it might be kind of all right. But in the middle, it's like it's miles away. So it feels uneven to play. Um, it feels really stiff to play. That's the way I describe it. It just feels stiff. I know when my truss rod needs adjusting because I'll pick the, the bass up one day and it's gone really humid or something or I've travelled abroad, whatever it is. And I pick it up and go, oh, man, that just, it just doesn't feel really crisp and snappy like it normally does. Uh, and it's, it's the truss rod. Now, the reverse of that is the, the, the neck could be too straight. There might not be enough relief in the neck uh, or even worse still. So let's do, just deal with if it's perfectly straight. Uh, that can work depending on, on, on what you do. I have a, a funny little, um, again, I, I, you know, I, I, this is too hard to convey. Um, so, again, if you've not dabbled with this stuff, you know, get somebody who knows what they're doing or watch videos. Um, because, again, I don't use feeler gauges or anything like that. But essentially, get that truss rod right. Now, um, what I mean by my funny little thing, right, I, I use this, you might have heard it. <laughs> That snappy sound. And that's really kind of synonymous with uh, Stanley Clark. I don't know if there's even a, a, a technical term for that, right? That, that sound. I, don't, I just call it the Stanley Clark thing. But what's going on is, um, especially when you get up near the, the board here, right? If you play notes softly, you get that smooth kind of round sound. And then if you keep digging in and pushing, like I'm literally pushing in, right? It's like Wooten. And really pulling it, so pushing it and raking across, right? You get that kind of snap going on, and it's it's very Stanley Clark. And uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's like a threshold where that starts to appear of how hard you need to dig in, right? And I like that kind of threshold to feel the same um, all the way up and down the neck and all across the strings. So I kind of use that as my final little adjustment when I'm, when I'm doing truss rod stuff. So I want down here to be like... Right, so if you've got your neck completely straight, you're going to get more of that down here and less of it up here. Right, so I find there's just a little bit of relief in there. Again, I don't know if you know Gary might have measurements. You know, uh, be really cool. But uh, you know, but basically, get that sorted because again, like the notes, those two things, it's just never going to feel good at all. Right, uh, more relief allows you to dig in a bit more and get more meat and more weight in the sound sound down here, uh, as opposed to you know when it's a bit straighter, you're sacrificing fatness down that bottom end but it feels great and then if the neck's got a back bow or it's you know just going that way a little bit then below the fifth fret is going to start being really buzzy or not play at all so yeah so those two things uh neck relief and nut height and if it means just you know just getting it into a, a repair shop or a, you know a luthier just to get those two things done well worth it okay so i'll the, the other three are going to be quick to get through. So we'll just see if there's any more questions. Well, just regards to that, Gary says, neck relief, I usually put a capo on the first fret, press yep. down the 17th fret and slide a 12-5 fella under the 7th fret. Feeler. Feeler. It says, oh, it says fella on oh, it. There you Sorry. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading it. Uh... I've just auto-corrected it there. <laughs> oh, he says, sorry about the typos. <laughs> You're all right, fella. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he says, old guy typing on a phone here. <laughs> oh, uh... yeah, let, me, let me demonstrate that, actually. Uh, really quick. Sorry to butt in, John. I'll, you should read the rest of that, but really yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, you know, I, I never check it from, like, up here because it, really the truss rod's dealing with this portion like he says from like the 17th fret you know that bit and and this bit can be kind of addressed separately but yeah like he said use a capo capo um and you know or you can use your first finger and you can do this but you can't you can't measure it then so that's why gary's method is correct and much better so there you go but, yeah. you, but at least you can have a look if you got your base now you can fret the first fret get your elbow about the 17th 
and just see if there's like loads of movement. What what measurement did he say there? Uh, he said, so you put a cap on the first fret, press down the 17th fret and slide a 12 thou feeler under 12, the 5. 7th fret. Uh, it, it just fits. It just fits, right. Yeah, yeah so that's, yeah, there you go. It Top tip. Say, um, he said, if it just fits, awesome. It, <coughs> excuse me. Awesome. If it falls through... And then he typed a T. Yeah. And then that's it. And then. But he, he wants to. Yeah, I'm going to say he's probably going to see turn the truss. But right. we'll leave. I'm not going to interrupt it. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the, honestly, those two things, right? If you've been like struggling with slap or if your bass feels kind of clunky to play, right? Those two things alone are going to make a massive difference. And, um, you know, I, when, I've, when I've been teaching in one to one, you know, in person, which you don't do much at all anymore. Um, and I've seen people struggling with slap, you know, they're trying to get this thing I'm showing them and I'll just let's swap bases for a minute. And I'll take their base and I'm like, wow. Now I can usually do it because I've been doing it a long time, but it's flipping our work, you know, and I'm not going to lie. My bases are really easy to play, like crazy easy to play. Um, and it's all set up. I shouldn't have given that away, but there you go. <laughs> uh, just to say to Gary, he says, click on the see more. Uh, but there isn't, Gary, oh, unfortunately. Right. It doesn't sort of say see more. Uh, it just kind of ends. Maybe it does. Where, where, did, if, where did he post, you know? Uh, it's on YouTube. On YouTube. So maybe yeah. actually on YouTube, uh, if you want to check that out. Yeah. Uh, and Dave is just Thanks, saying Dave. that 12 thou is 0.3 millimetres. Thank you. Right. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> Gary thinks the truss rug cover looks like a Rick and Hacker. A Rick, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, Gospel Blues Man said Tusk is uh, like a synthetic bone. It's like uh, synthetic bone. That'll probably be, yeah, that'll be it then, yeah. Um, and Gary said slapping on a harmonic point can produce some wonderful sounds. I practice that regularly. Yeah, yeah, actually, it can. You know, um, and as well, another thing I, I meant to say after we moved on from that was a um, couple of things. One is that sometimes I'm not that bothered about it happening, you know, um, partly because of the, the creative thing. It just gives it this this vibe. And partly because if you're playing something that's moving along at, at a fair rate of knots, um, and especially if you're playing with some accompaniment like a drum machine or a band, then, you know, you're probably not going to notice that. I'm not saying particularly that. That is a bad one, that, you know, if you don't want it, you know. But, yeah. And also, the other thing, just real quick, is the lesser fret, fretted, <laughs> the lesser spotted, lesser fretted bass guitars out there, you know, like uh, Fenders and stuff that have, you know, a, a bigger body and less frets. They're actually kind of easier to slap in a lot of ways. You know, like that... That middle area there, it's like, whoa, super easy. The tension feels really low and, you know. So, uh, in some ways, I find it quicker and it's definitely cleaner. But, yeah. Gary uh, just says, with most dual action truss rods, remember lefty loosey and righty tighty. Yes, indeed. Uh, indeed. I'll tell you what, Gary, you know, just throwing it out there, um, you know, I hope you don't mind. But maybe, uh, maybe it might, if you're up for it, you know, I might be out of turn, but maybe it'd be cool to get you on the stream one time what do yeah, you think John great, you know, yeah. be, if you're up for, I don't know if you fancy it tell us to where to go by all means but and, yeah and I think it would be hilarious because he's a very funny guy he is <laughs> yeah that'd be really cool that so yeah you, you, let us know if you fancy that it'd be it gospel blues man saying so so you do not need or prefer a high or lower action for slap compared to non-slap like if you had one bass just for slap right okay so funnily enough I'm going to get it on to string height or action it's, it's my next one, actually. So I'll, I'll go into that. And just before I do, anything else, love? Yeah, Gary's up for it. Awesome. That's so cool. That's, that's really exciting. I'm well excited about that. Right. Um, so moving on, number four out of my list, sorry, number three out of my list of five uh, tips, uh, setup and, and um, setting tips, is string height or action. Uh, we used to call it action people call it string height these days it's the same thing we're talking about essentially you know the height of the strings you know when when you're not playing from the the frets right i think probably most people understand that because there's the old joke about you know having an action high enough to drive a double-decker bus under right you know and um you know and in the past 
people have just had to make do with, you know, particularly back in the 60s and stuff, you know, dreadful instruments, some things that didn't even have truss rods or, or anything. Um, but these days, yeah, you can get a set up really, really, really fine, finely dialed in. And, um, and this ties in with that question or comment somebody was just uh, talking about. What was it like? Do you need different is it better to have one dedicated just to slap kind of thing i think they were saying yeah like if you had one bass just for slap um yeah. you know do you it's a, so so you do not need or prefer a high or lower action for slap compared to non-slap so yeah if you yeah. had just one bass yeah so you know this is this is where you get in you start getting into compromise territory right and that, that's where i've lived all my life with set up right in this kind of like compromise kind of area where with act, with string height, right? You, the lower you go, the easier it is to play. You know, uh, at all. You know, not just slap. It's just like much easier. Your left hand doesn't have to press as hard. You know, if you if you can get your kind of mindset around it, you can play lighter with your right hand, and it makes everything much more nimble and snappy and 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 all the rest of it. But it doesn't sound as good you know um there are parts of it that can so for a start the lower you go with action or string height the more fret buzz you're going to introduce right and depending on the instrument like some some basses just you know absorb a lot of energy and even with a really low action they don't buzz that much and um, other ones really sort of sustain in that high frequency area and you get loads of buzz or whatever so for me, anyway, every instrument I approach a little differently. Some some basses, um, you know, regardless of setup. Let's just assume that you know the the, the fingerboard. I mean, fretwork. Sorry, the fingerboards are all perfectly, um, you know, set up. Yeah, some some will need a, a slightly higher action or like a higher action, and, and others uh, a lower. But essentially, for slap, I would say you want to have a pretty low action, right? And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that, again, there's, there's, a, there's a kind of threshold, right, when you're playing slap bass, with, with this hand anyway, before you, you get the slap sound. So you're going to get this if you slap really lightly. Now, on this bass, because the action's really low, I just set it up the other day, actually. Um, it really isn't much before I get... Can you hear that? That's not what you call a slap sound and then and then there right and so there's this kind of point at which you get the slap sound that nice ringy bell kind of attacky sound right with a high action and if you take all that other stuff into account like too much relief in the neck and a high nut and stuff you can <laughs> you can have to fairly go at it before you even get that sort of slap sound to come out so um so yeah so so basically the lower the action is within reason like if it's too low you don't get anything you know if, if it's too low you slap it and it just kind of compresses itself and there's nothing there but generally speaking if you've got a pretty low action right that stuff's going to be like easier to do right hammer-ons are going to be easy as well um but it's mostly that right hand thing and the same with pulls as well right again there's like a sort of threshold if you start gently right um you know that's just like softly plucking the bass not really the, the bass string sorry but then there's that point where it starts to pop right same thing if you've got high action you're gonna to have to <laughs> really pull the thing before you get that pop uh, and then by that point the volume of the pops just like off the chart you know it's like it takes your ears off so so a low action is great now having said that a higher action will still work but you've got to work harder at it and it will give you a fatter sound you've got less chance of fret buzz and it's going to be more of an all-round sound now if i dig in right um, see, I have to actually work my bass differently to get different things out. If, it, I, if I want to play some blues stuff, right, that's not really what I call like a bluesy sound. And that's because 
you know, I'm getting all that kind of Stanley Clark slappy kind of thing. But with this low set, sorry, if you had a high action setup, um, you know, you could switch to doing bluesy stuff and it'd just give you that round kind of P bassy fat sort of sound. So you've to yeah you've to you've to think about it when you've got a low action like I'll I'll roll some of the high end off roll the lows up a bit turn the volume up a bit and then just let that stuff do the work and not dig in so much <laughs> and of course there's all that stuff we talked about you know in the last stream as well but yeah so um so i hope that kind of gives you like an overview there's no like one size fits all although there are specific you know heights that fender suggests and things like that but for me it's like where do you put your seat in the car you know you just find what works for you uh, and that could take time you know and the cool thing is with action by the way if you get somebody to set the bass up well so that the you know string to string i.e like your d string's not like much lower than the others and, uh, and things like that you can always adjust your action by going like one quarter turn of each screw at a time you know, and as long as you do them all, the whole thing's going to raise up by a set amount. And then if you want to take it back, you just go, you know, the same amount of turns anti-clockwise. So, yeah. Any more, Jam? Yeah. Um, Gary says five over 64 or three over 32 of an inch at the 17th fret. But that's all to do with feel. Why work harder with a high action? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You know, um, and like I say, you know, you can get um, you can get your bass ballpark, you know, um, or very close, you know, using feeler gauge and stuff like that. And uh, even if you've never done it, you know, you can use like Gary's recommendations, or if you've got a specific bass and they recommend a certain height. Um, and then, like I say, just just play about with it from there, you know. But just make a note of how many turns. Be quite accurate and stuff. You go, you know, you go anti clockwise or clockwise. Um, and, you know, you'll start to get a feel for what you like and you might be able to adapt your playing. But, yeah, um, any more stuff, Jan? It, any more questions or comments? Another comment uh, from Gary. He said the strings need to follow the radius of the neck. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, the, and, um, again, it's something that I couldn't go into in, in, in this video. But, yeah, excuse me. Um, but yeah, they've got to follow, the, like Gary says, the, the, the radius of the neck, obviously. You know, they don't all want, want to be parallel. They've got to follow that curve. And also, they get a little bit higher as they go towards the, the E string as well. So, but you know, to make room for the bigger strings. So, yeah. So, Gospel Bluesman said, so I understand then, best to have one, uh, best to, I'm assuming, best to have one bass for blues and one for slap. Yeah, um, or, you know, like, uh, um, for, for me, I like to... <laughs> it's just personal for me i like to be able to pick any bass up and do whatever i kind of want with it so for me i would i would hit it in the middle like get the action low enough so it feels easy enough to slap but high enough so it doesn't make it unnatural for you to do other stuff you know um or you know or or, or adapt the way you play but if you did you, yeah again like i say then you were in that situation of course as well where if you want to play slap, you've got to change the bass. But if you set the basses up, so I think it's partly set your bass up so that it's it's somewhere in the middle. That compromise thing, get it so it it it's leans towards the thing you like most. So if you like the bluesy thing most, lean it slightly towards that, and then maybe adapt your technique so you play a little lighter. If it, if you're getting too much of that that snappy, you know, thing. Uh, that would be my advice, and that way you can just, you can be playing, because it can be cool to, to mix those kind of sounds and approaches, you know, if you were doing a, a blues thing. That was the most terrible fill ever, but you get what I mean, you, you can then just mix them, yeah. Ted uh, Ingram says, fret evenness, non-rocking frets makes a huge difference in the playing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing what we're talking about there is, is you know, is, is proud and um, whatever the other is, frets, you know, where they, where they dip in and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, and that's, again, I, I, I hate doing it, right? 
but I do it myself. But I highly recommend if you want the frets leveling. So basically, I think this one's got a. <laughs> I managed to sort it out. But yeah, this one had a, a, a proud fret and, um, you know, and and I dealt with it myself. But if you've got a lot, if you've got like, ha like if you've got a, a proud fret or a low fret, what will happen is as you play up the neck, you'll have one note on one fret that gets really buzzy and then the next one's really clean. So like I say, I can't really get into that in this stream, but if that's the case and you have no idea you know, best to get um, get the, the frets levelled or checked by someone that, that knows what they're doing. But that makes a huge difference because then you can get the action lower. Well, David's asking, what are your thoughts on filing a fall away on the higher fret? Well, yeah, because that's what it was, you know, what Gary was sort of talking about, um, you know, the, uh, the, the relief between the 17th fret and the first fret. And I was saying this bit you can deal with separately. And that's what I do is, is I kind of, I don't like a lot of fall away because then the notes get progressively fatter. I, it might seem weird, but I want them to have that to to get that snappy Stanley Clarky thing. If I want it, hang on. My knobs are uh, my knobs are binding jam. Oh, right. <laughs> and then if I don't want it, you know, I don't have to do it, but. If you go too much with the fall away, I find that the notes just start to get uncharacteristically round. If you've got this going on up here, they start to sound like, ooh, ooh, you know, what's that, an owl? <laughs> I don't know. Like the top ooh, string, if you, you, you like, like that. You know. That could be anything, Scott. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> As opposed to. Right. So, I yeah, I do like it, but it just. Just enough, you know, just just enough, just enough. <laughs> just for anybody who, who may not know, where is the truss rod adjustment? Well, it's different on different bases, but um, usually if you've got one of these guys, a truss rod cover, it's it's under there. There you go, Mike. And But sometimes on old fenders or, or uh, replica fenders and things like that, and, well, just some other bases generally, it's here, it, um, and there's a little kind of scoop out there but not on um vintage fenders you just got to take the neck off <laughs> oh uh gospel blues band is also asking okay p or j bass and what about pickup height right okay so um, um p or j bass just both just uh you know just for different stuff um p bass for like you know land rover jeep tractor meaty working fat ballsy amazing 70s funk tone <laughs> uh jazz for you know for smoother kind of you know scoopy kind of you know both pickups on sounds and for that honky kind of you know jacko-y thing um you can yeah but 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 for me both for, for me for me neither <laughs> as well you know like both as in i love them both but for me neither as in you know like if i'm playing a jazz then i wish i could add that p bass sound if i'm playing a p bass sound i feel limited because i've only got a p bass sound uh which is you know you can do a lot with you can be very flexible you can don't get me wrong um but i might want to throw two pickups on and get that you know that i mean the difference on the swb for example um you know i'm not comparing it i'm just saying that that it it really highlights the difference between this is just um, the neck pickup, right? The bridge pickup, right? List how different this sound is. Right, you know, so. The, there's some magic happens with two, two, you know, coils, two pickups, and um, and I like that, you know. So um, yeah, so kind of like I like them all. I've I've played loads of jazzes exclusively for ages. Um, I've gone for periods where I listen to everybody else playing P basses and go, I've got to get a P bass, and then I do about two gigs and go, can't. It's not for me. I love the sound of it, but not just, you know, on its. I like to have choice. Yeah, I'm waffling. Go on, John. 
Terrell, Terrell is saying for him, uh, using, um, he says, for me, using my five string Ibanez one, three, or five, I'll pull out the felt fabric roll up I had inserted just in front of the bridge for slap. I keep the base wrap across the nuts regardless. Right, yeah, that's yeah, that's cool, and that's that's thing. These are great little tricks that people people do to, to you know to to make the bases more um, you know well rounded, if you like. You know, good tip. Yeah. Any, yep. Anything else there, John? Uh, uh, David Cousins reckons a good jazz bass will cover most bases. That's the thing, right? So you know, yeah, you're absolutely right. A good, and so will a good anything bass. That's the thing. It's, it's at the end of the day. Um, you know, you can do the Marcus thing, you know, like Marcus did, Marcus Miller, and he, he just saw that bass, he liked it with the blonde, you know, fingerboard, uh, and that's it. You know, he just he just kind of stuck to that, and, and, and that's the thing. You know, you can do, you know, uh, yeah, if you play something like a, an EBO, you know, an original one that's just, just got no treble output at all, you're going to struggle to kind of get a great tapping sound and stuff, because it, it doesn't produce that, but... Generally speaking, you know, a, a good bass uh, that's well set up will do, will do everything. And then it's just, it's just personal, I think, from that. It's just what you hear coming back and, and, it, and, it, and whether it makes you kind of enjoy what you're playing or, or not. But, but yeah, you know, you, uh, uh, most bases will do, will cover most bases. There you go. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? It's what I did there, John. Yeah, I do. Is that your new slogan? <laughs> it is. No, well, if it sounds good, it is good. That's, oh, yeah. that's the new one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that one. Okay. Um, uh, Gary, actually interesting uh, thought from Gary. He says, uh -huh. I just realised that pianos and harpsichords are slap instruments, hammer and pluck. I like that. Yeah. Yes, they are, yeah. And maybe that's why I was always so drunk. I mean, how cool does harpsichord sound? I'm not even kidding. It's very good, isn't it? It is good. If it is good, it sounds it good. It is good. <laughs> <laughs> Any more, Jan? Cam uh, camera's on you, by the way. I am just working my way through. To you, babe. By the way, <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to put myself through this, but I mm -hmm. thought I'd have a do at playing Mr. Pink. Oh, nice. At, at the end. I haven't played it for ages. My hands are freezing. And, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's fancy doing it. Yeah. To be fair, I think you should maybe think about it, or, or because we're nearly ten past five. Right. Okay. So. Let's let's just whiz through the last yeah. uh, couple of uh, things and hope everyone's enjoying this. Um, if there's any obviously really important questions anybody wants to ask, there's the super chat feature which will yeah, push well, your comment right to, uh, yeah. your question right to the top. Yeah. Um, and thanks for the people that have super chatted already. Absolutely. Okay. So the, these two. Um, like, I'm going to reel a bunch of stuff off that, that we can look at in other uh, lessons. And, by the way, I've been working on uh, my way back to you. Everything's <laughs> working on at the minute. Isn't it? Everything's just full <laughs> on working. It is. <laughs> so, well, not actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been working on this at the minute. Uh, this is like a slap bass workshop. Um, and I'm still working on it um, in, in terms of the format. I want it to, you know, really give, you know, like great... A great value experience for people and stuff. So it's very um, exciting, isn't it? It is exciting, and that's um, that Kajabi thing as 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 a part to play with this. You know, yeah, so you can now speak Kajabi, can't you? I can, I can. <laughs> so yeah, if if anybody fancies that that's on the screen now, uh, maybe drop me an email. I don't know if Janet, you can put my email address in in the in the chat. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm there's quite a lot of interest already, and and they are like on the. You know, when, when I release it, it will be like on a first come, first served basis. You know, I, I, I sort of log when the emails came in. Um, what was going to say now? Um, yeah, and there is um, there is actually a discount for anyone that's a member of the channel, right? So anyone that's already a member of the channel or on Patreon, um, you you get a priority booking and a, a bit of discount as well. You can become a member of the channel if you click on the little dollar sign. Down there somewhere. <laughs> okay, on only on YouTube. Right, let's crack on then. Um, the the other two things I'm just going to lump these in really quickly. Strings. Let me just uh, just really quick word on strings because that's a, I could do a whole live stream on that. I need to learn. That's what I should do. <laughs> All you know, do it. They can keep you to an hour. Then you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So strings. You say women can talk. <laughs> Strings make a massive difference. There's, 
this is a personal choice thing, right? No right or wrong. Um, and again, you can get into what I call that, you know, compromise territory with this as well, right? So no doubt about it, big old set of heavy flat wounds with a reasonably high action is going to give you a fat, juicy bass sound and it's going to work and, you, you, you know, you're going to get... You're going to get booked, you know, it's, or whatever. It's going, to, it's going to work. When you're trying to get these kind of tones that we all love from players we like and stuff like that, you know, whether it's Mark King or Stanley or whatever it is, um, you know, they do tend to use quite low actions and quite light strings a lot of the time. Not always, uh, but Wooten uses light strings. King uses light strings. Stan uses stupidly light strings because like on his old uh, recordings, you know, he was using... Uh, rotor sounds and they'd like you can bend them up about three stratospheres you know, you know so um so yeah it's something to consider and again it definitely makes slap playing way easier like beyond belief makes all playing easier um i use 30 to 90 long scale strings or 35 to 95 on a short scale base or as near as i can get um and they allow you to do a bit of bending and stuff, but just the same thing. It just makes everything a lot easier. But you've then got to work to get the, the fatter tones out if you want them. Like I, I, I said earlier, if you just kind of put really light strings on, low action, all the things I've talked about so far, and then just go hell for leather. It's not going to sound that good, you know, you, you're going to, but... but um, It's going to make that stuff easier and then if you just like adopt a slightly different approach a bit of a lighter touch and then dial a little bit of lows or highs off you know you can get those lovely round tones as well and especially if you use an amp that's just di'd so strings i would say light gauge strings is something to consider if you're finding slap quite hard work you know especially that left hand stuff you know um and also round wound strings uh, as opposed to flat wounds give you a snappier more quick instant attack right flat wound strings sound amazing for slap but it's that more vintage 70s louis johnson that kind of thing late 60s kind of sound uh, and it doesn't feel as satisfying when you're playing it doesn't give you that immediate attack it's kind of like it feels like you have to hit it to to get it to work so yeah that's all i'm going to say on strings at the minute i've you know those gauges are worth checking out it's not a lot of money just to try it one thing you got to bear in mind of course is that if you put lighter strings on then the truss rod will likely need adjusting okay but if you've got a lot of relief if you're checking your relief earlier in the neck and it's like whoa then putting some lighter strings on will we'll actually send it in the right direction all by itself. So that's something to consider. And then number five, because uh, we need to <laughs> crack on, is tone settings. And again, I'm going to be really, really general about this, right? Uh, but a lot of people ask me, actually, what settings do you use on your amp? What settings do you use on the, on the bass? Right now... Um, a lot of people think, I'm just going to take a drink, Jack. Okay. Uh, a lot of people think that I use a lot of boosted treble, uh, you know, and, and that kind of thing, and a lot of boosted highs. But I don't, right? Let me show you. So a lot of stuff that... So you're there. <laughs> I think we're back on. Sorry about that, guys. We just lost it for a minute. So yeah. um, what was it even talking about? We were talking about strings. Was it? Uh, don't ask I got me. Really, I, got, I got really lost there. <laughs> Somebody remind me what the hell I was yakking on about. Ah, uh, Jim Churi, you're gone. Yeah, but Gospel I, Blues Man. Oh, no. I think we're back, though. Yeah. Let us know if we're back. Pretty sure we are. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, we are. Yeah, yeah. Gary says you're back. Yeah. What was I saying, guys? Hecky what, thumps. What was I saying? Oh, uh, 70s thump, uh, slap bass sound. Yeah. Is, you've got to hit harder for the attack. Yeah, we got that. And then after that, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, not a clue. No, no. I don't know. So do remind me if, if I went off. Uh, I, I didn't go off topic. I was just concentrating on trying to get. You went off? Tone settings. Right. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah. Um, treble. Treble. Mark Smith says treble. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. So. So, like I say. Um, oh, Jim Cheery says amp settings. That's right. Yeah. Thanks, okay. guys. Um, so, basically, um, a lot of the stuff that people... You know, when you think like classic, I talked about vintage bass tones the other week or maybe last week. Some of the stuff that kind of, you know, adds to that vibe is a lot of it is subtractive stuff, right? So what I mean is if you're playing a passive bass, like a P bass or a jazz or whatever, and you've got no active electronics on, on board, then, you know, everything after the pickup, you're kind of losing high-end information and a bit of low-end as well. So you get that nice, warm, middly sound, right? Especially if you've got a long guitar lead. It's subtractive, right? It's not that a, an active bass adds anything. It's that the active bass is kind of pre-amplifying the signal right here on the bass. And then after that, it doesn't lose as much, you know, if anything. So that's the first thing. You've got that subtractive thing going on. And then old strings will have less treble information less high frequency stuff uh, to provide again if you're using a higher action you're going to get less fret stuff now so part of the sound is that grit and that growl from the strings part of the sound you know good slap sound can often be that and again with a high action and a badly set up bass you're not getting any of that either so so basically if you get all those things right and you've got new strings uh, or newish strings, then if I set this bass completely flat, it's active, by the way, so it's not doing that subtractive thing, right? Uh, and I play this, let's have a look. Um, yeah. That's completely flat. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing at all. There's no EQ at all. Um, and that's not in my opinion, not too bad a sound. I wouldn't suggest the the stereotypical thing that people talk about is 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 that scooped thing, you know, like scooping the mids, boosting the lows, boosting the highs. Sounds great, don't get me wrong. But again, some you know, people were asking about an all round setup, you know, that you can use for all kinds of stuff. And I adopted that sort of like look, you know, like embracing mid range in my slap sound um, years ago because you can just change the way you're playing. You don't have to dial in a slap sound. You know, you can be you can be playing, um, you know. You know, you can to a large degree kind of just, just call it on tap. Whereas if you go for like, let this sounds really cool i'm going to go for a really like everything boosted up full i'm going to turn the volume down to compensate right you know it's it sounds cool it's got more snap and bite on the high end and stuff i don't want to go into all enthusiastic like this <laughs> but it's Just stay uh, over there will you i don't want to get pulled no, that's it but you know, it's it's kind of it's just it's more setting in stone that I'm I'm playing slap and that's that. So generally, my advice will be um, if you do all the other things, you, you, you're a lot of the way there. And then I just tend to just dial if I, if I'm going to be mainly playing a slap thing, I will tend to dial in a little bit of high end. So let me show you how much a little bit means. If we so that's flat, all right, at the little centre bit, and I'm going to move my, my fingers this much. Did you even see it? <laughs> all right flat treble boosted a little bit flat treble and i'll tend to do the same with the bass i'll set it in the middle find that click a lot of basses have or a lot of ele active electronic basses have a little detente in the middle find that bit and boost it a little bit all right and that's that's it because all the other things that we talked about are doing most of the work you know 
So, um, yeah, that is my top five tips for getting a, a great slap tone. Some of them were set up and some of them were settings. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to um, have a quick do, even though it's late, I'm going to have a quick do at this Mr. Pink thing in a minute. I uh, hope you don't mind. Just for just for crack. Anything more, Jan, to add there? Uh, well, just one thing, because uh, obviously I'm aware of the time, uh, but uh, Dennis Bailey is asking the... Um, the bass, the live bass workshop, will it be on a weekend day? Okay. So just really quickly then, um, thanks for showing an interest in that, by the way. Um, it's going to be run at different times because there is already quite a bit of interest in it. And so it, I'm probably going to have to run, you know, at least a handful of workshops just to accommodate everybody. And so what I'm going to do is and, and by the way it's going to be run at three levels as well it's going to be like a beginner intermediate and advanced and what i'm going to do is, is try and group people together that you know wear the same time uh, or roughly suits so obviously we've, we've got to be flexible on on both sides i'm not time tabling them in until um you know i've got a full idea of taking all the bookings and we can work it out but it's going to be Basically, anybody that's interested out there, there is going to be a time slot that's going to work for you, I guarantee it, you know, whether it's midweek evening or morning or weekend. Yeah, so it's going to be pretty flexible. And like I say, I, I, I intend to try and group people with um, people who I think will get a lot of benefit out of interacting with each other as well, you know? So, yeah. I've just put your email address there again, just for anybody that, if they want to contact you, so... Scott's email address is there. That's wacky. What's going on? <laughs> it's all right. There you go. <laughs> uh, oh, it's on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there we go. But yeah, I've just popped it in the chat. So if you're interested, you can contact Scott on that email address. Thanks very much. Right. Any Anything more to add, Jan? Uh, not really. I think... Uh, <laughs> I think Ga we should go. <laughs> Ga Gary uh, was amused, I think, with the Ecky Thump. He says, Ecky... <laughs> Ecky thump, the goodies, lol. It's, it's quite a northern saying around here, ecky thump. It, it is, yeah. Ecky, ecky thump. Right, okay, I am yeah. going to have to uh, adopt the, the the Scott Divine gloves, I think. Right, yeah. Hands <laughs> are cold in here. Right, so I'm going to have a do at this just for the crack. Uh, I don't know why, because I have played it for ages. I don't even know if I can remember how it goes. But I'm going to have a go at Mr. Pink, just because um, I haven't played much and the way pieces so thanks very much uh, everybody for for joining us i just have to say scott it's really good to see you playing an swb again it's fun isn't it yeah it's nice yeah, uh, oh, just, I like it. yeah I, i'll have to tell you about it next week but it's, it's come <laughs> funny enough it's come from florida actually uh from uh, somebody that uh, that i teach over there and uh, they bought a blue one that i had direct from me and then this one became surplus and now i've got one again so yeah. very cool Right, so uh, so here we go. Let's have a do. Um, let's have a do. So, <laughs> what am I doing? Gospel blues man said, "Thanks very much. Learned some things today." Thank you.
Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> See you next time. Cheers. Thanks very much indeed. Been a pleasure.